I've become more of a confident person and, and more happy, and, and uh, so I can write happier songs. Well, like I said, three albums. Can you say maybe look back briefly on each album and say what what sort of uh, development you've well the band has been through? Um, well, the first record uh, I, I developed to handle my mustache, which was terrible. I think we don't get a lot of people that are asking me to grow it back, other than like, you know, some guys maybe in the United States. Um, but we developed, like musically, we really became better musicians. We toured so much on the first record. You know, we were out on the road four months at a time. And uh, so when we came back in to do the second record, we really uh, like, were exhausted. We became a lot better musicians, but it was hard to get back into the writing process. And, and uh, But we met Howard Benson, who produced our second record. and. Uh, he really took a liking to the band, and really, I think he could see some development there, and, and uh, kind of took us under his wing. And the second record was fun to record; it was great. Once again, we went out, and it was more successful than the first one, and we went and toured another two years. And and uh, then I think we got more into the groove, more in the, into the groove of of being a, a touring band, and and uh, we could see that we could do this for a living. You know, because some bands only get like one shot, one record, and then they're like, oh, okay. But I think after the second record was over, we could see that, you know, we, we were successful and things were working out and we could, I guess, be a band forever. So going into the third record, I think we felt really confident and, uh, and we're really motivated to make the best record of our, of our career, which I think we did. And now we're at the end of the third record and we got to start thinking about number four. And what are your what what is your what are your thoughts now on number four? Are you happy um, now? Am I? What? Sorry. Are you happy? Yeah, yeah, I am happy. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of sad, but you know, being in the industry this long, you know, I, I look at the look at what we do is more of a business. Uh, a lot of artists will kind of shun that because being an artist is just that. You know, you have to. It's all about the music and the art, but. Unfortunately, we're on a we're a signed band on a label, and we have to sell records. So I, I really think a lot about nowadays more than ever about having to I have to write hit songs, and I have to promote the band and tour, and so I think about that all the time. Writing hit songs. Writing hit songs. Yep. Yeah. What makes a good hit song? What what makes a hit song a hit song? I think like Bad Girlfriend. I think. Uh, a fluke <laughs> sometimes sometimes you can't over like you can't just sit down and write a hit song if you could do that then I'd just sit at home and make zillions of dollars um, some of it's a lot of luck but a lot of it is the fact that you have to find something that a lot of people can that attach themselves to whether it's a, a simple melody or you know some sort of hook or or something that just makes people happy bad girlfriend makes people especially women really happy have fun. So uh, I want to make sure we keep that in Theory of a Dead Man, you know, the funness. There's a lot of fun on this Scars and Souvenirs record, so I want to make sure we bring that into number four. What is then the ultimate hit song, can you say? What is the ultimate hit song? Yeah, for you? There isn't one. There's, there isn't. No, just pick one if you say, well, it's a really good hit song for me. Uh, well, Day in the Life from the Beatles is, is one of my favorite songs. I don't know if that's a hit song. It's an amazing song, um, but I don't know. What makes that song a good song for you? Um, it's, musically, I think that it's just uh, it's it's um, um, it just goes through so many different changes. It, it, it goes from an E minor and then it goes to, into the, the middle part, where it's E major and it's all happy. Woke up, got out of bed, and then it goes back into the E minor part again. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just such a great song. It's it's almost like they they spent so much time in the stu the studio. The Beatles, that, you know, uh, they didn't really tour that much. The Beatles, they uh, they quit touring so they could focus more on recording great records. Which, you know, nowadays it's the opposite. Now you record very little and tour nonstop. Is it a shame maybe that maybe you would say well maybe we we we, we would like to spend more time in a, just maybe creating such out of the box songs because it's an. I, um, I think that's what a lot of bands try to do. They try to like go back and see like uh, Sgt. Pepper's and try to like, I want to make a record like that. You just can't anymore because people's attention spans, you know, you look at Pink Floyd, The Wall, 
you have to listen to that record, you know, all the way through. It doesn't make sense if you just downloaded one song off iTunes. You can't really do that anymore, I don't think. It's kind of sad, but uh, it's all about downloading singles and iTunes, and you can't make a, you can't make a record anymore, or as much, uh, and be commercial, I guess, uh, and, and make a whole record from front to back, but who knows? We'll see. Okay, yeah, well, you, last question, you were saying the Beatles. Uh, what is then an, an ultimate rock hit song? Hit rock song? Um, I don't know, man. Stairway to Heaven is still a classic. But still an epic long song. I've seen maybe three or four minute song. Uh, well, song from number two from Blur yeah. is pretty yeah. awesome. Because that's just a riff. There's yeah. nothing to that song. That's just a, such a great riff. That's, what's the, that's the fun part about it. Rock, because if you can write something that simple and that, you know, um, short and sweet and have people react to it that quickly, that's its own. Okay. Thank you.